So I will start with thanks, because this is what I do since I am uh, the head of the Master's Program of Design. So thank you for all of you being here. Thank you for Esri and his team for organizing this. Thank you for all the participants and speakers for very exciting and stimulating lectures. I've learned a lot in the last hours. And um, we, we warned the organizers, Valeria especially, that uh, we will be making several changes, of course, because we're very good at uh, last minute changes and so on. So uh, this is why I'm talking and the presentation is not yet on screen. Anyway, so I'm here to present a new, um, newish concept for teaching, which is entitled um, Guest Seminar. When Esri was the head of the program, um, we usually brought participants from abroad to be teaching as guests. But now the seminar has uh, migrated outside of the walls of Hansen House. And uh, Roy Bigger, which is the head of the management um, track, um, we're getting there, I hope, um, has um, come up with a new concept that is called um, ex um, Extreme Life Conditions. And every year we venture to a collaboration with an R&D, with um, designers meeting scientists, meeting engineers and architects this year. And we try to deal with this concept of extreme life conditions, um, be it in food security and agriculture, at the Arava R&D, um, at the Arava R&D Center. Last year, we um, traveled to Masada to look at the sinkholes and to think about living around the Dead Sea, which has become, um, thank you. Uh, Alon, can we just uh, get rid of all the notifications? Thank you. <laughs> a lot of noise. So, um, and, and this year we collaborated with Dimas at the Ramon Crater, where they do um, analog missions to simulate living on Mars. We have several tracks in the department, and I'm glad to have several um, graduates and profs here at the audience. So um, the largest of um, the, thank you. The largest of the tracks is um, the design management and innovation track. Then we have the uh, design and technology track. And finally, the um, about design track. Each of these track attracts and also teaches and preaches in a different way. And uh, I have to say that we're combining all kind of attitudes, all kind of approaches. To, and methodologies, of course, to teach um, design. And the seminar goals are actually built on creating synergy and creating new ways of thinking and touching, dealing, researching material, researching forms, researching, in this case, ways of life. So this four-day seminar usually um, is typified with a very quick entry to a new field of knowledge. And uh, the students, and very often also the mentors in our program know nothing about the field. They do have a certain intuition or some very um, general knowledge, but uh, we didn't know about much about colonization or uh, different aspects that have to do with life on Mars, other than the song before we came in. Then um, we have to teach the students to get to know each other and to learn to work together. And given that each one of them comes from a very different background and some of them are not even um, designers, they have to work and prototype very quickly, research and create new um, insights very, very quickly. And the multidisciplinarity becomes both a strain and an obstacle because they have to come up with very quick and good and hopefully um, feasible idea that they will present in the following, in, in, on the fourth day. Finally, maybe the last thing that typifies this is to create a mutual language, a way to understand both the new material and the new insights gained. And as I'm sure many of you know, scientists, engineers, and designers do not always have the same um, understandings, do not always have the same understandings and um, motivations. So we have to incite everybody to work together and incite um, excitement. So the seminar structures is technically four days. This year we had six groups divided into four themes. And uh, we took all, our, all of our students, all of our first year students, 
um, to an isolated work environment. We barely even had uh, Wi-Fi this year, and it was a real obstacle. And um, we connect them with researchers and experts from various fields, and we create this multidisciplinary mentorship that um, typifies the seminar because not only the students get to mix themselves, but also the mentors coming from different tracks, they start to work together, as well as with the engineers, the designers, um, sorry, the architects this year, and uh, the scientists. So um, what typifies this uh, unique meeting point? First of all, we create this unique methodology that typifies us. So we have both um, the um, creative research that looks into the form, the materials, the textures, and the understanding of the material and forms themselves. Then we move to design research, which is based on tools coming from uh, an, um, anthropology and sociology. And um, we try to put the user at the center. So this is very human-centered design. And um, it is based on both qualitative and um, quantitative tools. Additionally, we have the problem-solving attitude that typifies design thinking. And um, this is also about identifying problems and emphatically approaching them, where there is always a user and needs that are at the center. And there, at the end of the day, there is also um, a solution. And a new um, implication, a new um, implied research involved. Moving um, to the desert, so here we see Alon and his friend, uh, architect Eldar Gans, that uh, explain to us about the habitat at uh, the desert. And this is a crucial thing for us to connect the designers, the scientists, and the research that is always very authentic and comes from the needs and the challenges of um, our meeting pace. So um, to summarize and to move to the examples, we have a unique hackathon-like process that entails a very fast entry to the field, a new field of knowledge, often several fields. Um, it is about collaborating with researchers that not always understand what kind of value designers can bring to their process. So it is also about buying, buying them in. And um, it is about identifying needs and opportunities and coming up with new solutions that are need-based and human-centered. So this year we focused on four themes. One of them was space colonization. The other one was ecotourism and how to think about ecological space tourism, given the real problem of space waste that is uh, beginning to take uh, more and more crucial place. Then we thought about the habitat, the actual, um, the, the actual building that Alon will describe. And finally, the last mission that I supervised together with Roy Bigger had to deal with communication, both among the researchers, the, the astronauts, as well as with, uh, between Earth and Mars. Um, and here you can see um, different um, projects, but I will focus on just one project that um, I would like to elaborate today, and um, I'll run quickly. So this group, entitled, um, like they came up with a project entitled Space Buddy, where they wanted to improve the communication in spacewalks. They wanted to improve the understanding of each astronaut um, to his mate. Very similar to what is happening in diving, when you usually go down under the water with another uh, diver. So um, this team was, of course, very multidisciplinary with designers lead from um, graphic design or from industrial design, one musician, two artists, and um, they wanted to focus on leaving the spacecraft and connecting and also uh, improving the actual communication, as I mentioned, between the different astronauts. So what they tried to, what they tried to do is to leverage um, the current technology and to ensure that uh, we have a better understanding of the emotional needs of the astronauts. And I'll be quick because we don't have a lot of time. So they created this uh, beautiful um, ornament that has light that is based on the body language and on the actual biometric uh, features of um, the astronauts. So here is an example. So this is Michal, an industrial designer and a lecturer in Shankar. 
wearing the astronaut suit of the Ramonauts that Alon will explain. And this is a prototype that um, the team created that can show if someone is having a problem, whether there is an emergency or if everything is okay. And I'll just explain very, very briefly that um, we also took inspiration, the students also took inspiration from jewelries that typify various, um, let's call it more traditional ways of living. And uh, this is quite similar to the Choshen, which is a necklace coming from the Bible that, um, that, the, that the priests have, um, have used. And I will move the mic to Alon because uh, we don't have a lot of time. So thank you, Alon. So, uh, good day everyone, my name is Alon. I'm very happy to be here, naturally. I was graduated, I'm an architect. I was graduated from this uh, great place in 2010. Um, now I run my own practice in, uh, in Tel Aviv. Uh, I teach a lot and I also a co-founder of uh, uh, DMARS. Uh, DMARS is a, a, <laughs> is a space a research center that we, uh, actually we started uh, here in the, tech, in the Technion. Uh, so basically what we are doing is, is we are trying to uh, mimic or to understand or to research the life of the first crew uh, members to land on Mars. And uh, doing so, uh, so during the last two years I understood that uh, uh, this organization or our organization has, has become some kind of an open edge uh, organization. We are, we are a non-profit uh, organization. Open edge in the sense that we, uh, more and more groups are joining us to develop their own ideas or, or, or their own uh, uh, interests. So uh, <coughs> for, 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 uh, uh, let's say for this example, it's a competition that we did, uh, designing a, a settlement for, ten, for a, a, uh, 1,000 people, and this competition we did with, with uh, doctors, with uh, philosophers, and of course with architects and engineers, and, and I believe that uh, this sort of, of uh, uh, let's, let's say collabora uh, collaboration uh, has, has led me to believe that uh, co collaborating is, is a sort of a, a, a research, or is a sort of, a, a, of design research. So, I would like to, uh, uh, and so for me, collaborating with Bezalel was some kind of a natural approach because uh, we see things uh, uh, similarly, uh, uh, in a similar way. For example, uh, Romy mentioned three tracks or three notions that uh, runs this uh, um, uh, indust industrial design. So about is, let's say, the cultural aspect, the, the history aspect, the material itself, some kind of uh, 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 designed to, uh, because you need to survive. And afterwards, we, we see technology, which is a future approach. We have to, to be all the time, the designer needs to be updated, up to date, needs to understand what is going on, uh, uh, what will be in the future, and for that, he needs to design. And of course, uh, management, somebody has to, somebody has to uh, let's say, control these two forces uh, uh, of, uh, about and technology and to put them together. So. What we are trying to do on, in, on, in DMAS is we also, try, we, we also want to, to try it. We want to test everything uh, in, in real life. And I think this is the beauty uh, if, of, the, of this project. So two, two examples I will show you. This is a, 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 a mission that uh, a, a, a doctors made. They want, uh, they want to try and to test uh, how, can, uh, how can, uh, astronauts can help to uh, injured astronauts, and of course we, we developed and designed everything here. You see, ah, sorry, you see the, uh, the life support system, and you see uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, ro the rover that carries the, the, th the things to the doctor, and, and, and of course the suit and the helmet. Uh, so everything we are trying to do by, uh, by ourselves, uh, and of course with all the groups that are joining us. One minute left. I have three minutes, sorry. So, uh, what can I do? So, and I, I think I, I would finish with this. It's a movie that we did. It's not edited uh, completely, but I think it, it shows, it's, uh, it really shows the, the potential of collaborating as a tool, as a means to, uh, to develop a new design. Uh, it's a collaboration that we did with Ormat. It's a huge uh, factory that uh, uh, creates a, a, a thermo, uh, electric, uh, 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 electrodynamic in, in, in Israel, also a, an algae a, a lab and also two Danish architects. And I think the result is, is really interesting. Uh, we came up with this uh, algae 
uh, project. So, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's 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 not finished yet, but I think it will be. Nah. There you go. Get that. It should be cool. It's a big challenge. Getting there is hard. Surviving there is even harder. How do we build habitats to support human life on a planet so far away? We are Saga Space Architects and we are here in the desert of Israel. And the reason is, one of the ways we prepare for Mars is to test things in an analog environment. So that means that we simulate all the mission aspects of going to Mars. Together with DMARS, we are testing a prototype space architecture on a simulated Mars mission. SEGA has built an astrobiology laboratory. The essential part of the architecture is that it has to be really light so we don't waste a lot of fuel bringing it to Mars. This is why we made a thin structure that unfolds and deploys to become a much greater room. It expands from 8 cubic meters to a staggering 41 cubic meters. So it's this compact little diamond that turns into a vast space that is a laboratory. In order to survive the long journey and tough landing, the habitat has large hard shells, which when it's closed, protects the lab like an armadillo. The atmosphere on Mars is very thin, so we have to create our own. The structure is enclosed in a membrane, flexible enough to fold and expand, and strong enough to hold at least one bar of atmospheric pressure. On Mars, you need a life support system, but instead of hiding it away as a hidden machine, we thought we could integrate it in the architecture. So we took algae. Algae is a sort of biological life support system in that through photosynthesis, it takes carbon dioxide and turns it into oxygen. Another benefit of algae is that you have a lot of radiation on the surface of Mars. And if you can cover yourself underneath water, which is a great radiation absorbent, then you'll be able to stay on the surface of Mars much longer. Another aspect of the bioreactor, which is often overlooked, is that it has an organism inside it. Humans need nature and other organisms. We are biophilic. Now, conventional plants are hard to bring and take care of. So we are testing whether simpler forms of life, like algae, can at least partially satisfy some of the astronauts' need for nature. Life is precious. And Saga is doing everything we can to make settling on Mars full of life. Just finish with that sentence. The next year will be very interesting for us because we got some kind of a budget from the Israeli Space Agency, and we're going to promote, uh, we're going to build our new habitat for a greater uh, experiments. So uh, please feel free to join us. Thank you.